first of all, what got you involved in music and, and how old were you? <laughs> I, I, well, I, I, I think I got my first guitar at 13, 14. I was about 12 when the Beatles really hit properly. And I also went to the school that McCartney and, and Harris, uh, Harrison went to, which was the Liverpool Institute, which is now Lipper. And like all the kids, probably in my class, you know, you asked for a guitar for Christmas, asked the mum and dad, who didn't know anything about guitars. And we all traipsed off um, to a place called Hesse's, which is, was the music store in Liverpool at the time. And they bought me my first guitar, Fiver, Czechoslovakian, with the strings about that high over the neck, you know, <laughs> You couldn't play, but you know, you st some people struggle on, I suppose, and some people didn't. And uh, I, I suppose I hung in there really. And then, you know, over the years, I got 15, 16 and got into music more and probably got into folk music because I had an acoustic guitar, I couldn't afford an electric guitar and things like that. And um, did a few folk clubs and what have you. And you know, then you, you get the bug and you think you're gonna, you know, do things. And then the way I went from there, really, I answered a, an advert in the Liverpool Echo. There used to be a, a, a column in the Liverpool Echo, which is the local paper, saying artists and entertainers. I always used to look at it anyway. You know, bass player wanted, drummer wanted, rhythm guitar wanted, anything. but I was only a kid, really. But then I, I got to about 17 or 18, I was at college, and an advert came in one night and it said, uh, a singer guitarist wanted for band due to go into the studio. And I left a whole number, you know, and I thought, oh Christ, that must be good. So I phoned up and uh, it turned out it was a band that turned it called Petticoat and Vine. And uh, they came around to my mum and dad's house where I was living and they auditioned me and luckily I got in. And it was, it was two boys, two girls. And um, the studio was just a local studio, you know, it wasn't a big deal sort of thing, but it was a big deal to me and them. And uh, we recorded a few original songs. And um, the idea then was to try and get a record deal and um, we rehearsed and rehearsed and rehearsed and rehearsed. We were very mamas and papperish in influenced, you know, two boys, two girls, four parts harmony. And then we started sending tapes off the way you do, uh, which I don't know whether they do it now because it's hard to get record deals, music business changed completely. Um, we sent loads of tapes off um, and Norman, the leader, and um, one day we got one back saying, you know, would you come down to... Uh, to London, you know, we were absolutely over the moon, jumped on the train to London and it all sounds quite simple and as if it was very short but it wasn't. And then um, we, we got signed and we got signed to a publishing company called Feldman's um, and uh, we recorded our first single for Philips in a studio that Dusty Springfield uh, recorded. And in fact, when we arrived to do our first single she was just leaving, you know, so that was a big deal for us. You know. And then it sort of went from there, really. You know, we did um, we did a couple of singles. We did quite a bit of television. How, how did they How did they get on the singles? Did you make the top ten or? Uh, no, no. The the first one, which was called Ride in a Carousel, they called it a turntable hit. You know, we got a lot of plays. You know, the first time I heard it was, I think, it, I'm sure it was Penny Valentine. I'm sure that was the DJ. Okay. And we were in the car, or it was at home, and. The, she came on and played it, and it was, you know, fantastic just to hear the, you know, the Because the Hollies had a song called Carousel, didn't they? They did, yeah. Also, was riding a carousel. Okay. Um, and uh, it did very well, you know, lots of publicity, got us loads of television, you know, we had, obviously we had good management, and, uh, uh, you know, it just didn't sell. It sold, but, you know, I, it's still on compilations, you know, you find it in sort of strange compilations, you know, around the world. <laughs> and, um, and then we did a second single. We did three singles. As I say, lots of television, a lot of radio, a lot of live gigs and things. And but uh, eventually, certainly for me, the, the band carried on. Um, certainly for me, I got I got kicked out in the end because I didn't like to practice as much as I should. And I was also getting to a point where I was t probably 24, maybe 25, and I didn't think we were gonna. You know, it wasn't making it as fast as I thought. Perhaps you know we were going to. But the, the, you know, Norman Val and the others carried on, and they did really well. Um, you know, in 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 their own way, and um, but after that, I then just went into like loads of people do semi pro. This is the man cave or Collins Garden Shed, or it's it's the venue for the Raven Fred House concerts. And it was here when we bought the house about eighteen months ago, so it was a big bonus for me. And uh, yeah, uh, there's a story about the house concerts. Um, shall I tell you it now? It's very brief. Yeah, tell me. I say it's very brief. 
think I said when we spoke earlier that I found out about house concerts about 10 years ago and I thought what a fantastic concept and I told my wife Barbara and she said yeah that's a brilliant concept but not in my house so I said oh that's great which is why we ended up in the back of a pub the Freshfield and that's how it all started you know uh, and then when we moved house about 18 no about two years ago when we looked at the house we loved the house but then at the bottom of the garden the previous owner who was a builder had built this man cave for himself and of course that clinched it for me because as my wife said when she saw it as well there you go you can do your house concerts now so we've had about so he's kicked you out of the house and you've not been lit in suit yeah there's a, there's a thing there's a there's a term in liverpool called bin bagged so if your wife throws you out you get all your clothes in a bin bag so if you get if i get bin bagged i'm moving in here <laughs> so that was a big plus as well well, because I found out about the concept of house concerts, I, I said to my wife, as I said just before, that's great. And she said, yeah, that's great, but you're not doing it in my house. So I said, okay, you know, people use it in the bathroom and the kitchen and all that stuff. So yeah. I said, okay, fine. So I thought, well, I still want to do it. So I spoke to Rob Ellen, who's got the house concert website, um, and who's been a great inspiration to me and a great help. I said, Can't, I haven't got it. He said, well, why don't you start it in the back of a pub? You know, is there a local venue? So the only one that I could see that would do it was a place called the Freshfield. And uh, they had a back room that held 50 people, I think, 60 people. And we started it there, and the first guy that we had was through an agent that Rob recommended. There was a guy called Drew Nelson from Grand Rapids, Michigan, which again has got that sort of cachet. So we made the poster up, you know, from Grand Rapids, Michigan yeah. to Freshfield. Um, and there was not a lot going on in Freshfield with regards to musicians coming in playing. So that was the first one, October, September the 10th, 2010 or something like that. And how many people did you get? Uh, it was full. It was full. But the funny thing was, because we called it Grateful Freds, and I had no idea why I called it Grateful Freds. I'm not a deadhead. I'm not a Grateful Fred. I like the concept of Grateful Dead and the ethos and the self, you know, they do it all themselves. But I'm not a big fan. But we called it Grateful Freds for some reason. And um, when we got to the pub that night, uh, me and a guy called Steve, who was helping me at the very beginning, you know, for a few months before he decided not to do it, the staff said, oh, we've had loads of uh, inquiries, you know. I said, oh, that's brilliant, you know. And they said, yeah, they can't wait. They think it's a Grateful Dead tribute night. They are thinking, oh, great, you know. <laughs> And there were people who turned up, not a great deal of them who were, you know, disappointed, but it was, it was full. And, um, and a lot of people who were there that night, you know, Colin MacDonald, Steve Millward, um, Ian and Tina, they were the following month. A lot of those people are still with us now from the very first one. And many of them have never missed one, you know, which is amazing. But anyway, we started there and we, and we had some great people there. The great Michael Chapman, you know, the guitar, wonderful. Uh, the Toy Heart, so many, but lots of Americans and Canadians. And then, like a lot of these places, it decided to change to a gastro pub. So people like ourselves, the jazz club that was there, they were just um, told to move on. Um, Do you think you'd, you'd have just carried on there indefinitely? Or were you uh, finding it wasn't quite big enough to no, see? No, no, the good thing about having a small venue, and it wasn't that small, and it had a, a stage area, you know, we had to bring our old PA, we had all our own equipment then. Was it, was it bigger than this room? Uh, it, the capacity wasn't probably bigger than this room, strangely, uh, but it had a bar in there, you know, it was part of the pub and it was well known. Um, we probably would have stayed there, yeah. I mean, the good thing about a small venue, it doesn't take it much to make it look f sold out. Yes. And it's great to put sold out anywhere, isn't it, really? And um, to have it full, relatively Yes, speaking. yeah, and it always was, you know. I think one night, um, it, you're, with any of these things, you're affected by the usual factors, you know, the rain sort of thing. If Liverpool are playing a big match at home and it's on the TV. Not Everton, no. No, Well, not Evans so much, <laughs> no, strangely, honestly. Um, but, it, you know, those things affect it. So we were always lucky to get 50 or 60, whatever it held, you know. Um, but the reason we moved is they decided to change to a gastro pub. And then it, we, were, we were casting around like the other clubs that had been thrown out. And we eventually found the Formby Royal British Legion which is just as it sounds, you know, Veterans Club, British Legion, flock wallpaper. Um, in the day, it looked like a British Legion. What we did was um, we just put candles on the table, made our own light, you know, lights were good. So when the people came in, it looked much more intimate. We had the big Atmospheric. Grateful Fred, yeah, the big Grateful Fred banner, which we've had from day one. Um, 
But what happened was the Americans, and because we always had American headliners, there were many times when they turned up at, in the middle of the afternoon, or, and you know they must have looked and thought, oh, this, oh, this is you know not great. But uh, the staff were lovely. Um, I'm told the beer wasn't wonderful, but I'm not a beer person particularly. But did me, and. Um, but once we, once the people came in and we had the little candles on the table and the lights were down low, and the lights were on, you know, it looked like any little venue. And we were there for uh, about eighteen months, and then luckily from for for me, um, the Atkinson was opening again after something like a three million pound two year refit, and they just phoned me up out of the blue and said, um, "Would you move?" Grateful Freds to the Atkinson, you know. How, how long ago was that? It's probably about six years now, maybe five and a half, six years. Uh, and the first one was like December, whatever it was. And uh, of course, I went to see it um, because you think, well, you know, let's just have a little look. And of course, when I moved, walked in to the studio with the fabulous stage, the wonderful lights and the sound, and the fact that you've got n no gear to carry, um, wonderful sound engineers, you know, in Cy and James, the, the staff there are all lovely, um, Chris, the, the stage, you know, stage managers, he just didn't have these things. It just took us to another plane, if you know what I mean, and uh, we've been there happily, very happily, for, I say, five or six years. So do you have any variation, or is it always the same sort of Wednesday in the month? It's always, it's always been the first Wednesday of the month, right. uh, traditionally. The audience that we've built up, I th a lot of them, are, well, most of them are friends, and I'm very f friendly if I don't know them properly. Um, there are loads of regulars, and I think a lot of them come on trust, really. Um, but we do, every time, you know, we'll have duos, trios, uh, and they, because they're Americans from Austin, San Francisco, Nashville, they've all got a sort of, again, a cachet about them, a glamour, haven't they? You know, an American accent puts, you know, everybody in another place and I can't say we've ever had no we haven't ever had a bad night it's they've all been wonderful in their own way give me a bit more on the on the kind of music you play because it seems to be wide open but when you talk about americana and roots to the average joe like me that that's kind of a very broad brush stroke yeah well well i'm probably like you and most people to be honest with you because you know i when i decided to choose the night I, 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 in my wisdom at the time, really, I thought the more I can sort of, the broader the, the, that I can make the brush stroke, the more I can include. So, like last night with the captain, uh, is is not Americana, but the fact that we call it um, Grateful Friends Americana Roots and Acoustic Nights, basically you can say that's acoustic, that's roots, that thing. But again, what's Americana, you know, really, and what's roots? Um, so it really covers a, a multitude of sins, but we get everything, you know, with that. With that tagline we can cover blues, old timey, bluegrass, uh, singer, songwriter um, and you, you know you, we, we've had the gamut of all of those really um, and the great exciting part is that there's still new artists coming along that you've not heard that type of music before um, I mean most of it's original but if you know a lot of the old timey and bluegrass stuff they'll do what they call standards maybe and classics like so, with blues as well same with the blues yeah. you know uh, our headliners are always americans or their headliners you know but our support and opening artists who we have because we always have an opening and a support um are always local or they're certainly from the uk nearly always local and like last night when we had white little eyes and alison benson but it's the same every month we have a, we do have you know because we're so near to liverpool and preston and leeds and manchester we, we're able to you know put, put on the cream of musicians the problem i've got is only 12 times a year so you know we're, we're, we're doing this say we're doing this now in april and i'm booked up already till next june and that's over 12 months so headliners now who are coming in to do main grateful freds i sadly can't put them on you know which is why having the house concerts in mid-month allows me to pick up some of them sort of thing. But the other reason I started this was it was a great opportunity for me to play because I wasn't playing then. You know, you know, I've played all, all through my youth and I'm a middle age and this, that and the other. But I actually stopped for a little bit. And so get back into music, I, I, one of the reasons was why I started this. But I also thought if I put a headliner on, 
I and my friends and band will open. So for many years, it was me and whoever, you know, me, Steve, me and Les, me, Les, Kareen, me, Les, Gwen, you know, blah, blah, blah. So you were kind of creating your own custom we, yeah. audience. Yeah, we did. And there's lots of videos on YouTube of the opening nights, you know, and some nights we were okay. Some nights we were great. Some nights we weren't so great. Yeah. And the other thing is, because the, the other thing is we wore our welcome out as well, because we were doing it every month. Um, and it's hard with life in the between to learn enough material all the time. So we were sort of eventually wearing our welcome out, you know, we were doing it every month and we were singing a lot of the same songs. Sometimes they weren't so good and they'd get a lot of groans from the audience, but they were always good natured because, you know, it was us that was doing the nights. Um, so there was a bit of that. Um, so now that I've got <laughs> proper musicians. Oh, you make no, a bit harder. Do you know what I mean? People yeah. who, and, and you know, they're only perhaps doing it once a year or twice, at yeah, the most, twice maybe, uh, the audience are happier. I, you know, I have an opener, a support, and then the headliners. And a lot of the headliners do say, I think I mentioned it to you already when we spoke, a lot of the headliners will sometimes say to me, is this going to be okay? Aren't they going to be fed up by the time we come on? You know, that's a lot of music in a two and a half hour, three hour period. The thing is, um, it, for the audience, I mean, I've been to shows, I've been to shows at the Atkinson and other places where it's just been one act, you know, no, no support and an and artist. And, they, you know, we, we, I went to see the artist, but sometimes it's a little bit disappointing, you know, you do, as you say, two 45s or two, you know, a half hour and, a, and a, a blah, blah, blah after the event. And sometimes that's a little bit, you know, of a stretch for just one, you know, because you've got to be a very very good musician and a great entertainer to hold the evening for the whole night um so it's just the way it's been set up and it seems to work you know okay lovely thank you thanks very much colin thank you